care approach. Earlier when we started this, this training session, I, I shared with you that you do things that other people don't want to do. You see the tragic side of life uh, on your shift constantly because of the runs or the alarms. And you deal with that negative side of tragedy with human life. What we're going to focus on is what we do back at the firehouse and how we treat each other using the care approach. And that's being compassionate. And looking at Merriam-Webster's dictionary definition, it's feeling or showing sorrow with an urge to help. You do that on the alarm or the run. But back with each other, we need to take take care of each other uh, in looking out for those needs. And that's where the humanistic side comes into play. And that's where being motivated by desire to help that person. Just not feeling sorry for them, but taking action with an urge to help. And then being attentive. Attentive is where you're being observant, considerate to that individual, but also devoted in what you're doing as a professional, but also as a human being. When you do this, the advantages are you're going to have stronger relationships with that individual. You're also going to have your awareness enhanced, just not with that person, but in all your interactions with people. This is, this is a good goal. This is an excellent objective. But we're human. I'm human. I'm not always attentive to people as I should be. But I know what I need to do. And it's just taking action on that. Responsive, responsive is replying to a situation or a request. The advantages with this is it provides feedback to the person who's talking to you. Either it be a community group, if it be the citizen, but our focus is each other at the firehouse. With this feedback, we're providing an answer to the individual. And you'll notice that this is being responsive as opposed to being reactive. When I think of the word reactive, I think of having a physical with your doctor. And when they get the little hammer and they tap the knee, you know, you have that reflex. That's, that's being reactive. Our goal is to be proactive by being responsive to, to the individual's needs. Then, of course, eclectic is where you select from various systems, doctrines, or sources. It's literally reaching into your toolbox and grabbing the appropriate tool for the need. Because as we know, you always don't need a hammer. You always don't need a vice grip. You may need a Phillips screwdriver, or you may need a, another type of tool to help you out on that. It provides you several options. But the thing that makes it interesting, the thing that keeps your skills sharpened, is it tailors your choice to the specific need for that situation. But remember what I said earlier? This is a process. It requires continuing education. The day we stop learning is the day we, we die. That's right. We may not die physically, but intellectually and mentally and all those other skills that are critical to keep our skills sharpened, we become static. So it, it requires continuing education. And this is true with all domains. It's just not for firefighters, but it's true for police officers, educators, attorneys, uh, dentists, physicians, the list goes on. This is what we're going to do in our groups. We have a group activity. And these are real world situations. This is outside of the domain of the tragedy on a call or an alarm. These are things that we are faced with as human beings in your profession and other professions. But this group activity is going to take 10 minutes. And we're going to use the care application in the, in the firehouse. And you've got the handouts there where it breaks down the different categories for being compassionate, attentive, responsive, and eclectic. Group one, uh, your assignment is, as a group collectively, how would you deal with another firefighter who returns to work after two weeks of being off after the death of a parent? 
And, and this is something all of us experience because our parents are aging and sooner or later if we haven't experienced it already, one of our parents is going to pass away. It's a given. It's not going to go away. Number two, group number two, you have a situation where a firefighter is going through a, a painful divorce with a custody court battle. How are you going to interact with that person at the firehouse when they're going through that emotional upheaval? Group three, you have a firefighter who is unsuccessful in passing the test for a lieutenant. Group three, how are you going to interact with that individual? Group four, you have a firefighter who returns to work after being on family leave for 12 weeks due to a new baby. So that's, that's something that's positive, you know, out of the scenarios here. So, I'm going to give you 10 minutes, uh, discuss it, come up with a care approach, and then we'll hear from you. Our time is up. So let's, let's hear from group one with using the care approach. Um, ours was a firefighter who returns to work after two weeks off after the death of a parent. And most of us here have experienced that in one way or the other. And one of the first things that was brought up as far as compassion was that sometimes there's some things that need to be done up front for someone before they come back to work. And um, Troy had mentioned, you know, a simple card, letter, flowers, a phone call, you know, a visit, anything like that to let them know that you are aware of what they're going through prior to them walking back into the station on duty. Um, then we talked a lot about acknowledging it instead of pretending that it hadn't happened. You know, giving that acknowledgement and doing it right up front so that, you know, because you know somebody's going to say something, it's like, when? You know, and if they do it right up front, you kind of get that out of the way and, and so you can let them then have the option as to whether they want to talk about it or not. Mm -hmm. You're basically giving them back the choice mm -hmm. of whether they want to or not. And we talked about empathy and about how it's really can't say I understand simply because of the fact that we all have different relationships with our parents and um, so it isn't so much saying I understand what you're going through but saying I know what it's like to lose a parent and then again allowing that opportunity to the, let them have you know whatever conversation they want to have with you about it. I, I could not have said that any better than you. I mean that was, that was very eloquent. That was very eloquent. Well spoken so, for the yeah, so that's, 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 a, that's definitely a, a talent and a skill, good insight. And, and really, it's, it's a personal touch that makes it the tailor approach. Uh, if we could purchase something online and have it shipped within 48 hours, everybody would be doing it, but then we'd lose that personal touch. That's what makes us individuals, and that's what distinguishes the different professions, because not everyone's a firefighter, not everybody wants to, but not everyone can be because it requires a lot of skill and it requires a special person. It really does. And it ties in. It definitely echoes the care approach for being compassionate, attentive, responsive, and eclectic. Any, any questions about the care approach? I, I think it has a lot of merit. And it's something that you can apply in everything that we do, just not at work but also with our family and, and with all folks who we interact with because it really is applying the golden rule as, as we know that as a society. What, what we've done during this training session, this workshop, is we've, we've had a lot of discussion. We've talked about seeking excellence in employee relations. And it's something that sometimes people say, oh, it's an HR responsibility. It's a human resources responsibility. No, it's not. It's everybody's individual responsibility when it comes to seeking excellence in relationships. You can't assign it to someone else as an additional duty. It's something that all of us must take ownership on because that's what makes us as individuals. That's what makes you good firefighters for Clackamas County Fire District 1. And what I've talked about is Manslow's hierarchy of needs. It's not the panacea, it's not the cure-all, but it gives greater awareness for folks. But it also makes us look at the dimensions of diversity. And now looking into the action form, instead of just talking about the weather, which we can't 
even change the weather, but we can control ourselves on how we respond to a situation by using the communication process, but also using the care approach that puts the wrapping and the bow on the package that makes it deliverable in our interaction with other people. And I want to finish this training session by mentioning Dr. George Saniana. And some of you may have heard this before, but he said, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. So history is the best teacher for human conduct and human behavior. And now the next step is what works. We can learn vicariously from other people on those patterns and strategies that are effective and flush those that don't work. I want to thank you for your participation, attentiveness, and you should be proud of who you work for as firefighters. Thank you.